Welcome to Between the Lines with James Spady, head football coach, Alabama A&M University. 30 minutes of highlights, features, and analysis of Alabama A&M Bulldog football. And now with your host, Ted Dixie, Between the Lines with Coach James Spady. Hello there and welcome to Between the Lines with James Spady. I'm your host, Ted Dixie. The Bulldogs hosted the homecoming of 2017, Lewis Cruz Stadium this Saturday afternoon. Coach Spady, a week of activities, but the Bulldog football team did their part by winning homecoming on yesterday. They kept their focus all week. We had a good week of practice, and, and uh, there, there was that, remember last week we had that quiet calm in the locker room before the game? Same thing this week. That, that tells me that they're focused, they're paying attention to the things that, that are their responsibilities, and, and uh, boy, they, they came out and we put together a really good team effort to, to win homecoming. A 27 to 14 score. Bulldogs scored early and often. And coach, at the end of the game, you had a touchdown drive that put the game away. But it was a will kind of drive. Well, one of the things that I'm most proud of is we actually finished this game. You know what I mean? Um, they, they made it. They made a little bit of a run, and of course, you expect there to be uh, some competition. All right. And uh, our, our football team put their foot on the gas and finished the game. I mean, uh, you know, kind of put them away. I bet you we had the ball for about a minute, uh, about 11 and a half minutes in the third quarter. I mean, that, that reduces your opportunity to come back uh, if we've got the ball all that time. But anyway, uh, we finished the game, and that's, that's what you want to see um, from a championship caliber football team. A little bit of adversity, Coach. We had a mechanical problem with the game clock, so you couldn't see it on the field, but you had to manage that through the entire contest. There was some difficulty in that. We, could not, uh, we couldn't keep track of the time, and I don't know if, you, if you've ever called a game and managed a game from a, from a coach's standpoint. Uh, being blind to the clock is, mm -hmm. is really very difficult, and so uh, hopefully we're going to get that straightened out and uh, we get that new scoreboard out there uh, that's going to change things uh, for the better. Speaking of which, there is a campaign underway to build a new scoreboard at Lewis Cruz Stadium. There will be more information about that on the aamu.edu website. When we come back, we'll take a look at the first half highlights right here on Between the Lines with James Spady. Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. Their student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 949. WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. I'm just a prisoner of love. I get misty just holding it. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Thank you for watching and welcome back to Between the Lines with James Spady. I'm Ted Dixie. Coach, it's homecoming. There are a lot of distractions during the week that you mentioned. But on particularly on game day, there's a lot of activity around the Hobson Fieldhouse. How do you handle that? Uh, you know, again, um, a lot of that stuff is around us, not necessarily invasive. Um, and, and what we try to do is isolate our guys inside Hobson Fieldhouse. There's, there's you know, they've got to get ready for the game. There's, mm -hmm. there's stretching to do. There's taping to do. There's, there's the mental, um, you know, getting yourself emotionally and mentally ready to play to do. Um, and, and our coaches are going through that as well. So uh, we just spend our time trying to isolate and, and uh, get ready for the game. And, of course, with UAPB coming to town, they won last week. They were thinking this was a big game for them, so we were going to see the clash of two undefeated teams in the conference. Well, there, there was much said on, on social media 
Um, and, and, you know, our kids pay attention to that. It's, a, it's and, the uh, 21st century. Yeah, and you've seen, you know, you've seen the, 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 the printouts of stuff that guys say <laughs> all around the, the field house. You've seen that. And so what happens is our guys might go read something. They print it out and tape it up on the, on the uh, bulletin boards around here. And, you know, hey, if you want to continue to fuel it, uh, that, then that to me is your problem. We, we, we would rather just play the game on the field. And someone would say sticks and stones may break my bones, <laughs> but the motivation you get from something that you put up helps you how? Well, this is a day and age of information. I mean, everybody has access to information 24 hours a day. And, uh, you know, again, any little thing that we can use for motivation, we're going to use it. And, and our guys draw energy and fuel from those, those motivations. So, uh, you know, it can be a good thing. You were picked to finish fourth in the Eastern Division as we look at the opening kickoff here in our highlight package. You were picked to finish fourth, Coach, and you sit undefeated 2-0 and o right now, so we know the pundits might have been wrong, and this opening drive of UAPB will get a turnover here and a touchdown. I'm going to tell you to pump your brakes first, Ted, because, you know, we have a goal of just being 1-0. and o. Uh, If we can be 1-0 and o this week, that's, uh, that's huge. I think that was Yurik Bethune on that... Uh, on that uh, pass rush right there, he was uh, really a dynamic player. And then here we go, Devontae King. He just keeps making plays, huh? Matt, you know what, Coach? The co captains yesterday had superb games. That continues a trend. Everyone that's named the captain has a good game that week. Yeah, Avery Giles, Jordan Bentley, uh, Devontae King, and Chaz Wilson were our captains yesterday. And here's Devontae just getting it off to a great start, showing that kind of leadership through his actions. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Now, he scores his touchdown. We kick the extra point. And, and I think we never uh, fell behind after that. We led from, from uh, wire to wire. From wire to wire. That's very good. And, of course, a big shout-out to our seniors, of which Devontae King is one. Coach, you get a victory in their last homecoming game. Yeah, and that's pretty awesome for those guys. They, they draw a lot of, uh, you know, this is stuff that they're going to come back to 10, 15, 20 years from now. And uh, those, those are all huge things for them to, uh, to draw from. Defense right here playing their butts off, man. They, they really – and listen, I've said this before, and I mean it, that defense wins championships. And to have those guys flying around like that, that's a, we're going to have a chance to win every game with that. A quill glass passing there that we yeah, just yeah, yeah. saw to Xavier Moore. He was 26 of 43, 291 yards, Coach. As a freshman quarterback, he plays like he's a junior senior. That's, that's very good for a young man to, uh, to basically, you know, bring himself up to a level um, that, that he can only get better at. And, uh, you know, he's, he's managing the offense really well, which is why we made him start it. Here's a weapon right here. I, I've told you that Octavius Miles is a weapon, right? That is just an incredible run. He, he, <laughs> like, he, he caught a pass. It's a possession route that we have out of our empty package. Mm. He caught a pass and he shredded the defense. And then uh, we, we stalled down there on the goal line and, and kicked the field goal. I'm, I'm wanting to score points. I always want to score points. It's a successful drive if you can score points. So the Bulldogs now will kick off. And you had a short kickoff going yesterday. You said, Coach, that the wind was playing a little oh bit of havoc God. yesterday. That wind was amazing because, you know, it was gusty. And, you know, one minute it, there was no wind. And then all of a sudden it gushed and, and it seemed like it was 15, 20 miles an hour. I don't know. I'm not a meteorologist, but, <laughs> um, but, but so the wind, yeah, big hit right there. Woo! Big hit. Was that Kenny Davis? Kenny Davis with uh, a wood yeah, layer. As they used to say back in the old days, go that man, mama. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Kenny Davis with a great game. We didn't think he'd play this week, Coach. No, he, he, was, uh, he was hobbled after last week with the shoulder injury. Um, there's a quill just, you know, hitting another possession route for us. He, he again, is, is uh, doing a good job of managing the offense. We bring Damien in. Uh, Damien hits a, a hitch route right there. We get really good yardage. You know, I think that one-two punch that we have at quarterback, mm -hmm. um, you know, can give other teams fit. Defense got another tackle for loss, man. They just, they just keep doing that. Seven and a half tackles for loss on the game, coach, and six sacks. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And then there's very good coverage on our punt right there. We wind up uh, stealing a possession. And your special teams coach has played well no matter who the opponent has been. Uh, so far, so good. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep my, my, uh, my hopes alive and, and uh, keep, uh, you know, Pressing the gas with those guys. We, we've got to win all three phases of the game to have a chance. This is Xavier Moore on the, 
the reverse here. You know, we were throwing, we were giving the reverse to Octavius last week, right? And and we figured everybody would be zeroed in on him, and then we got another guy who's also a weapon, and that's Zay Moore. We wanted to give him the ball. That was an incredible pass and catch on that sequence. Coach. Little half roll, um, putting the quarterback on the move, and then we do it again here with a with a what we call a naked, and uh, throws a comeback. You know, he's pretty good at moving the pocket and making those throws. Then we hand the ball off here to our little Florida Ooh. guy, and uh, he, he's an explosive runner. That's Trayvon Walters. He's an explosive runner, and you see it right here. He just explodes through the defense before they can react, and then before you know it, he's across the goal line. His throwing two touchdowns on yesterday, 16 carries, 89 yards for Mr. Walters. Yeah, transfer from Missouri, uh, originally from, I want to say, Bradenton, Bradenton Florida. Florida. Yeah, and, and there's some... There's some uh, some athletes down there. A lot there, of folks man. down there. Yes, Pete Hokey in the area yes, down sir. that way, no right. doubt. We're happy to have him. He's he's been a, a great addition. His his personality fits in with our team. He's a good kid, and uh, you know we're happy to have him. But uh, good first half. You know, uh, playing playing really lights out defense right now. Um, we go into the locker room, Ted, and, and I'm telling the guys that uh, you know we got to find a way to bring our offense to the party. We'll get more to that, I guess, in a minute. But look at that crowd. Look at that homecoming crowd. Over 15,000 people journeyed to Lewis Cruz Stadium on Saturday. Fine performance by the marching maroon and white, and we yeah. are so happy that UAPB brought their band as well. Oh, you are? I am, because okay. it gives people the whole college pageantry experience. And then you get to see someone else have to run off the field like we do when we go to someone else's okay, game. Well, that's really nice of you. That's really nice of you. Uh, service I, I can tell you this. <laughs> yes, service and sovereignty. I can tell you this. It was a great college football atmosphere. Uh, yesterday was a beautiful day for football. It wasn't hot. It uh, wasn't cold. A little too much wind for my taste, but... Mm. but it was a beautiful day. It was sunny, and, and uh, we didn't have to deal with adverse conditions. That's that's what I mean. Uh, and then the crowd was festive. Um, you know, there was a celebratory. There was a celebratory <laughs> air uh, about yesterday, and I was really excited to be a part of it. And you have said the big deal about this week is winning the football game. You We're bet. so thankful and mindful of William Hooper Council's contribution to the world, folks. This is why we celebrate homecoming with such fervor is because of coach council. Yeah, well, I can tell you this. Um, so many people plan their vacations, their, their year, around coming back here for, for homecoming. And we want to represent that. We want to make sure that, because uh, we stand on the shoulders of all that legacy and all that tradition, and we want to make sure that we honor them in the way we play. And what better way to do that than to win a homecoming game and have everybody uh, have a mm. successful outing. Every, everybody has a successful experience. Um, and so, you know, kudos to our football team for, for coming through for that. And definitely kudos to the Bulldog faithful for joining yeah. us on yesterday. Bright, sunshiny day, lots of folks, and of course, the barbecue smoke in the air. And as a side question, Coach, <laughs> you're so good. <laughs> we'll see about getting to that. We come back, we'll have a look at the second half highlights right here on Between the Lines with James Spady. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB FM Huntsville 100,000 watts 24 hours a day smooth jazz and cool vocals give your all to me give my all to you 90.9 FM WJAB for the campus of Alabama A&M University Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 
Thank you for joining us on Between the Lines with James Spady. I'm Ted Dixie. Coach, you're going in at the half. It's homecoming. Lots of revelry going on outside. Did you make a detour? Did you have your meeting outside by the dog pound, cooking barbecue, or did you go in the locker room? I told the coaches to meet me over in the tailgate area so we could find some ribs and, and some turkey legs. We were talking about turkey legs earlier, so we could find something to eat. But I, I got to tell you, though, during the course of the game, you know, you, you block out a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. It is hard to block out some, some good smoked meats, man. It, you can smell it, and it's, it, it just distracts you big time. Does that make give you a little motivation, Coach, that you like, now, if you want to enjoy that meal, you need to play hard in the second half, oh, and let's yeah. close it out? I mean, to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Really not. Not so much. You don't, you don't really think about it. But, but it does. You know, you'll smell it, and you're like, something smells good. And, you, and we haven't eaten for three or four hours, right. so you're pretty right. hungry by that time. But... Uh, we had work to do in the locker room at the half. Um, we had we had some getting better to do, uh, some adjustments to make. Um, you know, we were only up two possessions, and uh, that always makes me nervous because if they score one time and bring it to one mm -hmm. possession, then you kind of got to change what you're doing or or make more adjustments. And so uh, we went in at halftime and we talked about the things that we needed to do better in the second half. Um, the fact that we needed to to re up our energy level mm. and, and play at a, at a higher energy level, not just match them, but exceed their, their intensity. And so uh, I think we were able to get that done. We have to give a special shout out to our homecoming court, Miss Alabama A&M University, and of course the marching maroon and white doing their thing, and also to the university choir, which gave one of the most rousing renditions of the Star Spangled Banner I've ever heard. Yeah, I heard a little piece of it uh, from the locker room, and I think that was, uh, that was a wonderful thing to see. Bulldogs get the ball first in the second half, and here's Harvey Harris, Harris with a fine return, but I believe this one gets called back. Yeah, I mean, you know, here we go again with, with the referee talk, um, but, but to be honest with you, I, I, sometimes I just really believe that they don't see the same games we see. And that's Rod Randolph on the reception. Coach, it looks like he was your possession receiver in the second half. I mean, you know, one thing that I like about Aquil as a quarterback is he's going to take what the defense gives you. And, and uh, yeah, he went to Rod. Rod was a guy that was getting open. And, uh, you know, we, we just need to be able to matriculate the ball down the field. Nick Carden with another Bulldog field goal here, Coach. Yeah. Now, you said you like to score points, but you'll take those three when they present themselves. Points are always good. Now, you know, you can get into a situation where if you don't score touchdowns, you might find yourself in trouble, but uh, you'd want to finish each offensive drive with a, with a point. Uh, that's very nice, our defense right there. And, and again, they've been aggressive. They've been flying around. Travis Pearson, who, who does a good job with that group of guys, he's responsible for that, that uh, unit. Only giving up 133 yards How about on a that? day. That's amazing. That's a. I don't, I don't know if folks understand football well enough to understand how good a job that is. 133 yards of, of offense. And, and, and of uh, course, Pine Bluff coming off a of victory last week. They thought they might have had something oh yeah. having two quarterbacks, but we noticed their starter had thrown eight interceptions already. Yeah, well, I, I didn't know anything about that, but I know I know that they were riding high on a on, with a level of confidence and. You know, coming off that Jackson State win. They went on the road. They, they beat Jackson State in overtime, and I guess they felt like they would keep that going. But, you know, our defense had other plans. And I like that pass right here. During your game, I don't get to see some of the intricacies, but watching Glass just wave his hand and get the receiver to make a move. He was, he was trying to direct traffic a little bit, just trying to get uh, Ladarian Heath in position to make a throw and catch. Nice throw down the middle by the Bulldogs, mm -hmm. and here's Walters again on the left side. And we're trying to mix up our running, running pass. Um, you know, one of the things that you do during the course of a game is you use your tendencies. Look at that crowd. Look at that. That's amazing, isn't it? Jam packed. Yeah. Um, you try to mix up your tendencies, and, and if they expect you to run, you want to throw. If they expect you to throw, you want to run. And, and that's what we were doing at this point. I guarantee you this is going to be one of those tackles for losses. You know, Ooh, and going. another wood layer. <laughs> Our interlocking AAMU and the field and the facilities, we want to say thank you to the physical plant for making the campus look beautiful and then also cleaning up what we leave behind. They were out there on <laughs> Sunday morning getting yeah. the campus looking nice. Again. Those guys are working hard after, after homecoming, um, you know, and folks uh, get out there and they enjoy themselves and then, uh, you know, some, somebody's got to clean that up. So. And the crowd kept growing as the game kept going on. I know it had to get louder on the field, over 15,000 at the game. It's, it's always a really good, um, 
you know, atmosphere here at Lewis Cruz. And, and you saw us run a little play action right there with Aquil. Um, he getting the ball, he's getting mm. the ball to our tight end. And, Ooh, you know, that's a nice move. Th these guys right here, that's Octavius again, um, you know, a run after catch situation. And watching other games in college football, Miles has to be one of the fastest people in the nation. I, if I say it one more time, somebody's going to probably call and complain, but he has got to be, if not the fastest in the swag, he's got to be at least number two. Um, I can't think of anybody faster. And here's Glass on another Bulldog drive, another pass to Randolph. Yeah, and, and again, we're just trying to move the ball down. This must be the drive that, that uh, you know, in the second half, I think we had an 11-play drive. You know, in the third quarter, we had the ball for, for over a minute and a half. That means that there was only three minutes and some change for the other team to have possessed the ball in the third quarter. When you're doing that, that minimizes their opportunities to score points. Ooh. That's how you put the game away. Look at that. That Trayvon flip. Walters. I was like, what are you doing, Trayvon? He, he is the real deal. He is the real deal. I mean, you get a guy that goes to an SEC school. He went there for a reason. Right. And, um, and you know, we, we were able to get him. He came here for a rebound. reason, too, Coach. And it has to be and, you and your absolutely staff. Absolutely right. And, uh, you know, we are so glad. Look at this guy, man. He hit the line of scrimmage, and he had a definite intention to score the football. And the block to get him around in the second level. Let's, by the way, thank you for bringing that up. Let's not forget our offensive line. Uh, Keith Wagner's our offensive line coach, and he's got a veteran group of guys that are, mm. are playing with a lot more responsibility. They're playing with a lot more athletic intensity. And, and they, they see guys like this in Jordan Bentley. They see Trayvon Walters and Jordan Bentley, and they see a Quill Glass. Th these guys are back here. They represent us. If I can do a good job of giving them an opportunity to do something uh, exciting, then, then that gives those guys a, a more sensible sense of pride. I don't know if we have the shot at the end of the game, Coach, where you bring your team over to the Marching Maroon and White for the alma mater, yeah. but you got a little dance step there, Coach, when you're getting there. <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking about, Ted. Um, we want to, after every game, uh, we try to do the same thing every time. Uh, mm, we, yes. we, you know, the Marching Maroon and White, they, they do, do so much for us in terms of uh, the spirit of competition, the spirit of, of Alabama A&M. And uh, we want to show them our, our gratitude by going over to the band and, and in our whole fan base and all of our alumni. We want to go over to the band, we want to sing the alma mater, um, and we want to show people how much we love uh, being in the Maroon and White. One of the prettiest pictures that you see from game day are the respect that the student athletes and even yeah. the other students on campus have for the alma mater. Yeah. And we stand there and sing it. If you don't know the words, there are several young people that will teach you the That's words. Right. That's right. When we come back, we will talk about the Bulldogs' next opponent. That will be Southern University down in Baton Rouge. Coach, you're trying to go one and one that week, but people looking in the standings see the Bulldogs one sit and, on top. We just oh, excuse me, one and one and oh. People look at the newspaper and they'll see the Bulldogs with a 3-0, and oh, we hope, for next week. When we come back on Between the Lines with James Bay. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 98.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. And the home of Mellow Madness till midnight. You bring me joy. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Thank you for watching and welcome back to Between the Lines with James Spady. 
Bulldogs victorious this week, 27 to 14. Now you're getting ready to go down to Baton Rouge, play Southern University coach. One of the most telling games I've ever seen has been at Southern. We've beaten them at homecoming, and it is their homecoming this week. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the roles are reversed this week. Mm -hmm. We got we to take a trip down to Baton Rouge against a very quality football team. Make no mistake about it, uh, Dawson Odoms has that group uh, playing really well. Um, they, they've got a lot of talent. They've got some, some specific talent on offense, specific talent on defense, and, mm -hmm. and we're going to – this will be – the best team we've played since that beginning stretch of our season. There's no doubt about it. So um, we got some I's and dot and T's across. Won't be an easy trip, mm -hmm. pretty long bus ride, uh, but we're going to go down there and, you know, again, Ted, don't pump your brakes, man. <laughs> we, we don't care right now about being atop anything, mm -hmm. uh, at the middle of anything, at the end of anything. That is not what matters. What matters is that we be, we're 1-0 on Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening when the game's over. And then wherever we end up, if we can be 1-0 and every week, wherever we end up, we'll wind up being at the top. And so what you can't do is put the cart before the horse. And so that's what we're cautioning. If you want to hear a conversation mm. uh, with, with the football team, that's what you'll hear me say. Uh, fellas, don't worry about where we are. The standings will take care of themselves if we'll go 1-0 and every weekend. And, and that's, that's really what, uh, what the message is. Getting back to work, practice at 530. Tuesday morning. <laughs> 5.30 Tuesday morning. And then you'll get it. And going into this week, Coach, we've seen a lot of student athletes. Glass throws to 10 different receivers. We've got two, three different running backs. You've got several linebackers. This is the deepest team that you have had up to date, Coach. Someone asked me the question to ask you. How do you manage all those personnel groups now? It's tough. It's not an easy thing. Um, but but I'd, I'd rather have that problem mm. than to have the problem of I need a guy and I can't find one. I mean, so... Um, I, I'll deal with all the, you know, and we get parent calls and, <laughs> oh yeah, my baby should be playing. Okay, well, you know what, they pay me to make that decision, so mm -hmm. I'll make it gladly. And uh, you're just going to either have to accept it or, or not. And so that's, that's one of the things that you have to navigate. Mm -hmm. um, you have to navigate the, the different personalities. Everybody wants to play and right. everybody wants to contribute. Uh, but everybody can't play and everybody can't contribute. We don't have 11 on the field at a time. So um, that's why they pay us to, to coach the football team. And so um, we take that very seriously. And James Spetty will take his Bulldog football team to Baton Rouge this Saturday evening. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 o'clock p.m., which means you may watch, you may listen, excuse me, to the pregame show on 90.9 FM WJAB. Please. For replays of Between the Lines with James Spady, if you have Comcast, you can go to Channel 78 and you will see replays all Sunday night. If you don't, you can go to WAFF.com and watch it as many times as you would like. For Coach James Spady, I'm Ted Dixie. Thank you again for watching Between the Lines with James Spady. Ninety point nine WJAB FM Huntsville, one hundred thousand watts, twenty four hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals, and the home of mellow madness till midnight. Ninety point nine WJAB from the campus of Alabama A and M University.